Hello everyone and welcome to lesson number 3 of my deep learning course. In this video I will explain about activation functions and how to implement them in a multi-layer neural network from scratch. So, without further wait, let's get started! Whether you want to implement AI into your business or you just need consultancy from a machine learning expert, I'm the right person for you. From acquiring data till deployment, my multiple years experience will provide you full support which will help you to boost your business. To find out more, check the link in the video description. Welcome back. As you can see, we are again in our Jupyter Lab interface. We will repeat the same step to download the files like we did for lesson 2. So first, we have to go to my website, to lesson 3 copy this line of code all the links will be in the video description then go back to Jupyter Lab click on terminal paste that command now the file is downloaded we need to unzip it so unzip lesson3.zip press enter give it a little bit of time to refresh and here is our lesson3.ipython notebook so we can close the terminal double click on lesson3 and here we are in our Jupyter notebook in this tutorial we will see what are activation functions and how to implement the sigmoid activation function into a multi-layer neural network all from scratch so let's start as always here is going to be the video of this course now it's lesson two for sure when i'm gonna upload the video is gonna be lesson three make sure you guys subscribe and activate the notification bell now let's start with a question what is the purpose of activation functions as we saw in lesson two a neuron is nothing else than a linear equation mx plus b where x is the input in real world the relationship between input values and expected values is not linear this is the reason why we need activation functions. With activation functions, we can introduce non-linearity into neural networks. This is a concept very, very important. This is the definition that I would give in a short sentence. Now, let's take the network from lesson two and train it with different data with non-linear relationship. So first, we have to make sure that we are running on TensorFlow 2 environment. If you get any error, you can click up here and select TF2. In this case, no error. So this is the same code we used from lesson two. So I will not go in detail to explain how it works. You can go and check out my lesson number two video. I will leave the link in the video description. So we can here run this code. We create our narrow network class and we check that it runs without problems then we define our loss function again this is a mean absolute error then we execute our training function everything is the same as i mentioned nothing has changed now we train with data which have no linear relationship in this case we compute the hyperbolic tangent on the given input we can easily do this with numpy.10h function so we execute this code and as you can see, the loss starts pretty high, then it reduces, as it should. But when we get to the prediction of our model, actually it's pretty off from the labels, the actual labels. Only the fifth element is pretty close. All the others are way off. So the network hasn't figured out any way of solving this problem because it doesn't have the capabilities of solving this problem since there is no linear relationship. Now, let's see one very popular activation function, sigmoid. Sigmoid compute the output with the following formula, one over one plus exponential of minus x. Since it's not very intuitive on how does this function looks like, let's visualize it. So we can run this code. And as you guys can see, can zoom out a little bit. As you guys can see, we get this 
S shape. And with an input of 0, we get an output of 0 0.5. And then the more we increase, the bigger is the value until it plateaus to a level of 1.0. Same for decreasing the value. So everything is in the range of 0 to 1. And as you can see, most of the variance of this function is within minus 2 to 2. All the rest is, is really plateauing. Now, let's create a multi-layer neural network from scratch using sigmoid activation function. In order to implement non-linearity into the networks, we have to apply some activation function after each layer. In this case, we will use sigmoid. Since the output we want is non-categorical, meaning the output is some quantity and not some discrete class or group, we will not apply sigmoid function to the final layer, so only on the hidden layers. So here I'm defining a new class called Neural Network V2, which takes as an argument number of layers, which is an integer which has to be bigger or equal to 2, and will define, in fact, the number of layers that we want in the network. This class is very similar to the previous one, with a few exceptions. The previous network and only one variable for the weight and one variable for the bias. In this case, since we have multiple layers, and I'm assuming for this example that each layer has only one neuron, we will see later in the course how to implement multiple neurons per layer. We have a list of variables for the weights and a list of variables for the biases. Again, initialize in the same way that we initialize it for the first class plus another variable which just just an integer that tells me how many hidden layers we have in the class then we have a sigmoid activation function defined here so i have just implemented the formula i've shown you guys before so given an input x we compute the sigmoid but tensorflow also has some functionality so in case of sigmoid we also have the sigmoid function directly from TensorFlow. So in this case it's implemented from scratch, but we could have also used tf.math.sigmoid and it would have been exactly the same thing. Then we implement the call method. Again, give it an input x. We compute mx plus b into a for loop because we go through each layer. If the layer is not the final layer, then we also implement the sigmoid activation and then we just return the output tensor. So we execute this code. Now we will define a new training function for our neural network. It has the same principles of the previous training function, but this time we have to update multiple variables since we have multiple layers with one neuron each. So, as I said, it's pretty much the same. We just go into a for loop where we update our weights. So, first we calculate the loss. Then we compute the gradients. We separate the gradients for weights and biases. And in a for loop, we use gradient descent to update the variables. Finally, we just print the variables information. So then we can run this code. Now we can finally train the neural network. In this case, I've initialized the neural network with four layers. We train it for 50 steps and we use a pretty high learning rate for the purpose of, the video, of this video so that we can speed up the process. So we execute the code. As you can see, guys, we start already from a pretty low loss, 0 0.135. And then let's keep on training. It goes decreasing till we reach a loss of 0 0.063. And when we compare the prediction with the labels, we can see that they are pretty close this time, except of the first element, which is at some distance, as you can see, 0 0.95 and 0 0.76 from the labels. The other look pretty, pretty good. You should also notice that the output of our model is almost all the time the same. So it seems that no matter what kind of input goes in, the output is almost all the time, I mean all the time, very close to the same value, as you guys can see. 
If you know the reason why, let me know in the comment down below. So now let's see also what happened to the weights and the biases. So this is the weight of the first layer, second layer, third, fourth, and also the same for the biases. As you guys can see, first and second layer don't, don't really get much of an update. They pretty remain the same, pretty much. Same for the biases. Whether for the third and fourth layer instead, gets most, it happens most of the change, but especially in the fourth layer, we have the big change. So here you can see layer in the third layer we get we started from a value of 2.0 and then we reach at 2.16 fourth layer again we started from 2.0 and we reach 2.6 for the biases we get a huge update on the bias we started from zero and we reach 0 0.72 so now it's time to experiment by yourself try to change the number of layers and the input values as well try positive and negative values and see what happens. As a bonus question, you, can you explain the strange network's behavior when you give three positive and three negative input values for training? As an example, I left some, some values here. So what you can do, you can just execute this code and playing around all the time with the parameters and then execute again and we will always restart from the beginning. This is a field where just theory will not help you to get an intuition. So you really need to try out by yourself and experiment. So I really encourage you guys to really follow along the tutorials, download the Jupyter Notebooks, try it at home and see what happens. So that's it for this video and I hope to see you in my next video.